Hi everyone, welcome back to the Rangers review for your post-match briefing in Rangers 2, St Johnston nil in the Scottish Premiership tonight. Rangers cut the gap to two points at the top with a game in hand and what was a good week uh, last week continues into this week for Philippe Clement, largely with the result in the performance, although some frustrations, some big frustrations, uh, Chris Jack, I think it's fair to say in his post-match press conference, I think we should start, we're obviously going to do a brief analysis of the game here we'll, 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 we'll go into more depth in tomorrow's morning briefing but Chris I think that the place to start is probably Clement's post-match press conference if people have not seen his comments yet you can uh, watch it in full or read it in full on the website and the YouTube uh, page John Lundstrom could be out until after the winter break after a tackle that earned the red cards um, and, and forced John Lundstrom off at half time it bring us up to speed with, with what Clement said because I think it's one of the most angry uh, we've seen him in the, the short time he's been at Ibrox and if, if Lundstrom is out until after the winter break then yeah. that leaves Rangers leave, Rangers limited options even more limited than that then, doesn't it? I think that was probably the angriest that we've seen the manager in a certainly in a post-match press conference we've seen him on, on the touchline get uh, quite uh, emotive a few times but certainly normally when he speaks uh, post-match he's, he's going to calm down um, but he, he's really really unhappy with the uh, the challenge on, on John Lundstrom, really happy with a couple of other incidents in the game. Um, and that, that, that news on Lundstrom, um, it's just, I think it's, it's, it's the news that people feared as soon as they saw that challenge go in. Um, there was always a danger that it was going to be a, a bad one. Um, also, Lundstrom then also managed to get it to, it get through to half time. But the, the, the prognosis that he's out potentially until after the, after the break um, is also not a good one for Rangers. The, the games we've got coming up, with the very, very limited midfield options now, you're now looking at heading into Parkhead with Kieran Dowling and Dujon Sterling playing as your, as your midfield too. If, if anyone had seen that coming oh. a fortnight ago, never, never mind two months ago, uh, they're a better uh, predictor of uh, uh, Scottish football events than ourselves. So it's it's also a huge, a huge blow um, for for Rangers, a huge blow for John Lundstrom because he's been really he's been really excellent over the last over the last few weeks, and certainly since uh, the manager has come in. Um, and I think that the way the, the manager reacted and the, the way that he spoke after the game probably tells you all you, all you need to know. I'll read what he had to say, Chris. He said, um, this for me is the main concern. It's another player kicked off the pitch. This for me is the main concern. Again, a player kicked off the pitch. I'm not sure if we'll get him back before the winter break, so that's not a good situation. I don't want to go into emotions after the game. I'm a little bit boiling, so it's better to cool down make opinions about leaks or whatever but clearly it wasn't a good challenge with your studs forward like that we had one worse later in the game when a guy luckily hit the ball not my player the intensity was there to break a leg so come on not mixing his words after that one i guess that the slight positive spin chris would be firstly a hope that maybe tomorrow when they, they assess lundstrom's injury it is it's not as worse as initially has been feared rangers are certainly do some good luck in that area, but Kieran Dowell I thought was was one of Rangers' better players tonight. A few really nice passes through the lines. I know he spoke to the press as well. What did you make of his performance? Because he was a surprise inclusion tonight, but I mean, Rangers are really going to need him for the next couple of weeks. It looks like so important for him to get a good ninety minutes under his belt in, in the middle of the pitch. I thought for a guy who's not played a lot of football, who's not had a lot of uh, first team involvement, he, he came into the side tonight, equipped himself really well. Um, and can be, I think he can be really pleased with how he's with how he's come back into the side. He's also had to be very patient in the last few weeks. He's got a lot of competition in that in that area of the pitch. A lot of guys, whenever he's fit, there's a lot of guys ahead of him. As the weeks have gone on, those numbers have steadily dropped off. Or so Vaskin was out, Ryan Jack's out, Lawrence is out. I've now seen Lundstrom go down. Um, Sefuente has also felt a fell victim last week as well. So. Dill has had to be really patient. Uh, he never he never struck me as the type of signing who was going to come in and be one of the first names on the team sheet. He never struck me as the type of player that Rangers were going to build a midfield around long term, but he looked like a good, solid squad option. Over the course of a campaign, you're going to need squad options, and Rangers certainly now in, in the middle of the pitch, uh, they really, really need squad options because yeah. it's, it, it's very, very thin in there. Um, so I say fair play to Dill for coming in and doing the job, equipped himself well. I thought it was a wee flashes of what he can bring to the side. Again, a hat tip to Dujon Sterling for coming in and doing really well um, in, in that midfield role as well. So I think there's, there's positives there for Rangers. It's not as if they're down to absolute nobody to play in the middle of the park. 
But I say that that Dill Sterling partnership, it's not one um, it's not one that we would have uh, picked out. And if if you can uh, do a bit of a tactical breakdown on the two how the two of them will slot into a midfield together, I'd be interested to read it because I, I don't think he really knows how that how that particular partnership will will function. But it's one that we're going to see. Yeah, I, I'm I'm just looking Chris now for a piece I did. Uh, I think it was about a couple of months. It was, it was just after Clement came into the club and it was effectively saying the depth doesn't look great in the midfield. Now I think it was just after Raskin's injury and obviously since then now, including Lundstrom's tonight, you've had three more injuries in that position. So nightmare situation for Philippe Clement, but you'll have to look for solutions again. I, I guess to go to the overall picture, Chris, um, Clement inherited the side seven points behind. They're now two points behind with a game in hand. It's important probably to not bypass just how uh, out of the blue that would have seemed a, a mere couple of months ago. I mean, overall tonight, yeah, it, it, it was a game that was nervy up until about 80 minutes, even though St. Johnson hadn't even had a shot. I don't think they'd have probably touched the ball in Rangers' final third. Um, Jack Butland li- quite literally was not involved apart from the odd back pass. I think, I think he touched the ball 17 times in the game. But Rangers were always in control. It's a game in hindsight with with that second goal. You, you can suggest that, Chris. And <clears throat> again, Cyril Dessers comes off the bench. That's nine goals for Rangers now. He kind of is quietly kicking himself into some form under Philippe Clement, isn't he? And, you know, he scores the goal, but he also earns the penalty and, and another good cameo performance, especially with Kimar Roof's injury. Rangers needed him to click into gear, and it looks like he's doing that at just the right time. They certainly, certainly need them to, as you say, Josh, because uh, they're, they're very, very short of options in, in that area of the pitch as well. Again, that was something that uh, the manager mentioned. Uh, they're going to have a look at Roof in the morning to, uh, to try and judge the, the time scale on, on, on his latest injury. But um, you could tell, tell when Kamar came off just how disappointed, frustrated, angry, a, a real range of emotions for him. And it's hard... It's hard not to feel sorry for him. I know everybody will say, oh, there's, oh, there's Roof injured again and tear up his contract and he can't be relied upon. Kamar wants to play football for Rangers as much as the Rangers fans want to see play football eh, for this club. Um, I spoke to him in the in the mic zone after after Seville. A great moment for him, a, a moment that's been a long time coming for him. And it, 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 you, have, you have to feel sorry for him. It's, it's yeah, not... It's not his fault. He he doesn't want to spend this long out injured. He wants to yeah. be contributing. He wants to be playing in a, a successful Rangers side. And, and we know that if he is fit and when he does play, he can be part of a successful Rangers side. Um, so I think that you know, the, the way that he came off, obviously he walked right by the manager and then clonk and shouted him and he, he came back and gave him a I gave him a quick embrace. But as soon as that happened, he was straight down the tunnel. The shot was off before he was even out of out of sight. Um, so really, another really disappointing goal for him. Hopefully, it's not it's not a bad one. But as we've seen with with Roof over the last uh, couple of seasons, not just the last couple of months, it's just so hard to tell yeah. uh, how how long he's going to be out for on on whatever injury. So speak to the manager again Friday afternoon ahead of the ahead of the trip to Fir Park. Hopefully, there's there's some better news on Lundsum. Obviously, hopefully, there's some good news on, on Roof. But I think it's safe to say that Cyril Dessers will be will be starting against Motherwell. Um, and we really need to see him be able to put together a, a run of games because without him, Rangers basically don't have a striker at present. Um, so it was good to see him coming off or coming off the bench. I thought he, overall he played well. I, said, I thought he actually took his goal really well. Um, perhaps not expecting the, the ball to drop to him. I, I thought uh, St. Johnson had cleared it when Tav whipped it in from that right-hand side. But I thought he took his goal really well. As you say, won the penalty late on as well, um, and it, it was a game overall. Rangers, I don't think whatever we're, we're ever going to lose a goal up and a man up. It would, it would take something remarkable for Rangers to, uh, to lose the game from there. Um, and as as you mentioned, Jack Butland, he could have sat beside me in the gantry if he wanted to, and um, it, would have, it would have made no difference. I, I don't think they'll need to uh, uh, put his uh, put his shirt through a wash tonight because he just had <laughs> no, just had nothing to do. St. Johnson offered zero threat, um, but. We've seen we've seen these type of games before. We've seen teams come here and offer absolutely no threat, and somehow sneak something in, in the last minute with a, a ball being whipped in or a free kick in a corner. So thankfully, Rangers managed to um, Rangers managed to get through that. It was as comfortable as as you could have expected it to be. And after the highs of Seville, after the highs of of Hamden, as as we mentioned pre-match, the manager speaks about confirming and confirmations. That was confirmation that Rangers are very much in this title race. Yeah, I, I agree with you because it was giving me the one 0 was kind of giving me <clears throat> flashbacks of the Motherwell game at the start of uh, well near the start of the season, and it was a different performance to that. It's not fair to compare it to that game because Rangers really were they didn't come any come under any spell of pressure. St. Johnson, their first shot 
not their first shot on target. And yes, you have to caveat it with the fact that they were playing with 10 men, but still, you know, they didn't have a shot until I think the 91st minute from a, from a free kick, and I think it was one more shot in the 93rd minute as well. So it really was an attack versus defence drawn. And I, I thought Chris still, you can't, I don't think you can be too critical at all. It's not uh, intentionally being critical, but you can still see some areas where you just have to improve when they're playing against a, a, a low block, still maybe flinging in one too many crosses at points, even though that's where the first goal comes from. Um, but overall, I think you've got to say it's a, a really good night for Rangers. And as you say, it's these types of wins. They'll need to grind out to, to uh, continue in the title race. Going to, to Celtic Park without John Lundstrom, if, if he's not in the midfield, is going to be difficult. And uh, I'm sure will be a lot of coverage over the next few days about how Rangers might try to survive that. But just finally, I, I think another mention for Ross McCausland, who... Yeah, I, th I thought it was one of the, the brighter players for Rangers tonight, and he just goes forward. You know, I think Rangers have had a lot of, uh, on the simplest of levels, Rangers have had a lot of players in recent years who want to keep the ball um, over maybe making teams uncomfortable. And McCausland, again, um, difficult task trying to break a defence down, but I, I don't know what you thought in the stadium. I, I thought he was really bright when Campbell came on. He started to knit together a few attacks. And again, those two players and next to Dallas Sima, who was given a breather, and James Tavener, who was given a breather, and someone confirmed that rather than trying to give him a stand innovation, he actually just didn't want to have any more of his uh, kind of important players injured. Rangers will need these players in the calls on Campbell and Tavener to really deliver over the next few weeks because you are right down at the bare bones, especially if you're without Ruth and Lundstrom in key positions over the next few games. No, yeah, if, if you look at that list of, of players who, who are out and then think what a difference they would make to the squad, uh, in, in most of their cases, the guys that come in and immediately improve that start in 11. Um, it's yeah. been a long time since we've even spoken about uh, Danilo and the, and the impact that he could have made. Um, so there's, there's a lot of players there who, who should be playing, who could be playing, who unfortunately are not playing. And if Rangers can somehow get get through this run, if they can take care of business at Fur Park or Ross County here next uh, Wednesday night, it's going to be a same type of uh, same type of night. You would think same type of game, but the same requirement. Then go and uh, get the three points, then head into Parkhead, um, chance, chance to go top of the league. If, if this Rangers side really down to the uh, down to the bare bones and in, in certain areas, if, if this Rangers side can maintain the unbeaten run and leave Parkhead top of the table, you no, know, what a what a statement of intent that is. Um, I think that they've shown. That they can't have yeah, this type of run. They've shown it's now these type of uh, this type of schedule. It's it's the mark of champions. So do you have it in you to just churn out win after win after win? Even when you're not playing well, when you do lose uh, key players, Rangers probably still have a point to prove. Now can they take it from 15 games? Can they make it 20 yeah. games? And then extend it. There's going to be a blip somewhere. There's going to be an away game. There's going to be an Ibrox game where think things just don't go to plan. It doesn't click, and it's then well, how do you recover from that? So. This squad still has a lot to a lot to prove. It still has questions to answer, but I think the last couple of weeks have given the fans and probably given the manager, certainly given themselves, a bit more confidence that they can actually answer those particular questions when they do arise. Absolutely right, Chris. Uh, you're you're having a well earned day off in the, the cryo chamber tomorrow, but after that, it's going to be Motherwell away on Christmas Eve. Uh, lots of football over the festive period. Um, we'll have. Myself and Derek on the morning briefing tomorrow. Lots of coverage over the next couple of days before uh, Christmas time um, as Rangers. Well, the Rangers, Rangers story does not really stop over the next couple of weeks and looking forward to seeing what they can continue to do under Philippe Clement, even if they are going to be playing me or Chris in centre midfield at this point come the 27th at home to Ross County. Until then, uh, thanks very much for joining us. We'll speak to you in the morning.